Herbert William Cook will be remembered as the first casualty in Newmundy when he died on the 30th of April at Gallipoli. He was a very, very early recruit. Only 60-something days after war had been declared. For some reason, his father, George Cook, did write to the army and say he'd given his permission and he, he requested that he be put in a light horse battalion because of uh, Herbert's experience in the bush and he was a, obviously a good horseman and a daft handed with a rifle. But the army being the army, he was put in the infantry. He wrote a diary from the time he was in the army and went right up until the time of going to Gallipoli. And it's fascinating how he wrote about uh, things on the ship, the conditions on the ship, where he had arranged to have a fight with somebody on the ship and then it was called off. And <laughs> the food, the training that went on in the ships, the, the physical training, life on the on the on the on the canal and and uh, the you know the boats and everything else. It was just fascinating. Fascinating what he talks about. Herbert witnessed to some of the most extraordinary things at Gallipoli. He was in C Company, which was headed by Captain Quinn, and he would have seen the landing at Gallipoli from the ship that he was, was on. They were not loaded off that ship until 10.30 that night of the 25th. The next couple of days were spent skirmishing with the Turks, laying communication trenches up Monash Valley. And that position became known as the famous Quinn's Post. And it was putedly one of the most dangerous places where Australians ever fought. And Herbert Cook would have been amongst those men. He was he was shot in the head and I'm assuming that he was still alive when they took him down to the beach, otherwise they would have left him. He was buried at the first cemetery there, beach cemetery. When I looked at where he was in the cemetery, he's not a household name to Australians, but John Simpson definitely is and he's about four or five graves further up from him. So it's quite a well-known area where he's buried. Herbert Cook left a really valuable diary. That diary was sent back to his father through Thomas Cook and Sons. And I think it's just amazing that they were able to find these things to send home. I mean, it was just pandemonium there in the first few weeks. How on earth they ever found anything to send at home is just beyond my imagination. That diary was sent back to his father and the family donated it to the Australian War Memorial.